neither read aloud nor spoken about on screen, here are the books you might have missed in your favourite features. As book lovers, we're always on the lookout for our next read, and we couldn't help but notice just how often books were popping up in the films and TV we've been watching, as plot points, in conversation, and sometimes just as background. The longer we looked, the more we found, until it became something of a contest, looking for the subtlest invocations of character possible via books that are neither spoken of aloud, or in some cases, whose covers are never fully shown. So, here we've collected the best of the books we almost missed or plain forgot about from some of our favourite series and films. Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney, spotted in Succession. HBO's hit dramedy Succession centres on the Roy family, the dysfunctional owners of fictional global media and hospitality empire Waystar Royco, who are locked in a never-ending battle for control of the company. The tense, fast-paced manoeuvres of the Roys don't leave much time for sitting back and relaxing with a good book, so only the eagle-eyed and those quick on the pause button will be able to tell that that's Sally Rooney's debut novel Shiv Roy is reading on the beach in the series 2 finale. It's the back cover of the paperback that gives it away. You want to talk? Rooney's understated novel is an interesting choice for the possible heiress to a business behemoth, but perhaps she found some solace in the messy, intertwined relationships in the book. And of course, why wouldn't she be up to speed on the latest literary phenomenons? I have to be an honest broker. To save you, I can't be seen to be acting in self-interest. Grimm's Fairy Tales by the Brothers Grimm, spotted in Toy Story. Way back in 1995's original Toy Story, we catch a good glimpse of Andy's bookshelf when our hero Woody takes to the Tinker Toy Barrel to make an address to his peers. Everybody hear me? Almost all of the titles shown here are named after previously released animated shorts by Pixar, except for one, Grimm's Fairy Tales. Perhaps this is an homage to the countless Disney adaptations of the stories featured in the fairy tales over the years. We haven't yet seen the books come to life in the world of Toy Story, but maybe it's best to keep this one hidden just in case. What's going on down there? Is his mom losing her marbles? A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking, spotted in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. In the leaky cauldron, the watering hole of seemingly the entire wizarding world, a customer is quickly shown reading Stephen Hawking's influential masterpiece, A Brief History of Time, despite Hawking being a muggle. Interesting, too, to feature Hawking's theories in a film focused around time travel. It's hard not to wonder what the wizarding world would have made of quantum mechanics. Atonement by Ian McEwan, Runaway by Alice Munro, The Kite Runner by Carla Tussaini, The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen, and more spotted in The Holiday. Cameron Diaz takes a big stack of books to read, or not read, according to the film, during her holiday in, well, The Holiday. And it's a real smorgasbord. Besides those we've already mentioned, she also brings an Eckhart Tolle book, the first Harry Potter book, a Bob Dylan memoir, and a book about Abraham Lincoln's political genius. It's clear that most of this stack is made up of the biggest books of the mid-2000s, and also that the overworked Amanda can't give herself a break even on the holiday. Her determination to be on top of all things at all times collapses, and who can blame her? We've all been guilty of making that TBR pile just a few books too long. Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, spotted in Call Me By Your Name. Timothy Chalamet's Elio is rarely seen without a book throughout Luca Guadagnino's romantic drama Call Me By Your Name. As with Cameron Diaz, he's taken a whole stack of books to delve into for his summer abroad in Italy. But here, we see books as central to Elio's character and relationships. Elio and Oliver's many discussions about literature become a way to deepen their connection without having to allude to the hey. forms that relationship may take. What are you doing? It's reading. Of course, the film originates from Andre Asimov's novel of the same name, which itself references over 36 books throughout. So it's a nice nod to the original text for the film to continue this reverence to the written word. Come here to read. Can't tell you the number of books I've read here. Even the film's most infamous peach scene has a book at the heart of it. This time, it's Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. The Golden Bough by James Fraser, 
and From Ritual to Romance by Jesse Weston, spotted in Apocalypse Now. Speaking of Heart of Darkness, Francis Ford Coppola's epic film adaptation of Joseph Conrad's novel has deep and tangled literary roots. The two books depicted on Kurtz's desk in the film have intertextual meaning. The Golden Bough was an important work on comparative religion by James Fraser, while From Ritual to Romance is a study of the King Arthur legends, highly influenced by Fraser's work. Both were big influences on modernist poet T.S. Eliot, who Kurtz mentions in the film, but whose works are never shown. I'd never seen a man so broken up and ripped apart. Moby Dick by Herman Melville, spotted in Heathers. There is a persistent fan theory that the 1989 dark comedy Heathers is basically a remake of Moby Dick, with Renona Ryder's Veronica filling in the role of Ishmael and Heathers that of the White Whale. Whether or not that's the case, you can spot Moby Dick in the hands of Heather Duke, played by Shannon Doherty, during the film's famous croquet scene. Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin, spotted in Mad Men. It may have ushered in the golden age of television, but you'll find the characters of Mad Men reading books just as often as they watch the box. What better way to give us an insight into the many layers of Don Draper than to show us his reading materials? It's hard not to imagine his brain whirring at ways to commercialise Frank O'Hara's sentimentalism. You good? I don't think you like it. We can also see time progress through the books we see over the decade of the 1960s, from that Rand shrugged. That's the one. to Pynchon. But perhaps the most striking book featured is the shot from season six episode, The Crash, of young Sally Draper reading the classic horror Rosemary's Baby. Clearly far too old for her, it's a poignant signifier both of Sally's lack of parental guidance from Don and Betty and of the way she's being forced to grow up too fast in a world that's constantly and rapidly Bye. changing around her. Sally? Sally? Bye. Have fun. The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, spotted in The Shining. If any director is known for imbuing nearly everything in the mise-en-scene with meaning, it's Stanley Kubrick. So Wendy Torrance, played by Shelley Duvall, reading The Catcher in the Rye early on in The Shining, has long been a point of debate among the film's fans. Is it referencing the film's theme of protecting childhood innocence? Is it about isolation and mental health? In any case, there it is in Duvall's hands. Deep theorists, start your engines. Do you really want to go and live in that hotel for the winter? Sure I do. What to Expect When You're Expecting by Heidi Murkoff spotted in Arrested Development. In series two of the cult comedy hit Arrested Development, George Bluth Sr. hides from the law in the attic. As his isolation deepens, so does George's strange behavior. With nothing to wear, he begins cycling through the maternity clothing left behind by his deceased daughter-in-law. With nothing to read, he's shown devouring Heidi Murkoff's prenatal must-read, what to expect when you're expecting. It's an extremely subtle but incredible visual gag and a perfect example of TV book spotting at its finest. Sleep, I can't, I can't eat. Oh, well, look, it just peels off. Isn't that clever? Holidays in Hell by PJ O'Rourke, spotted in Bridget Jones's diary. For most of Bridget Jones's diary, our hapless heroine is having a pretty rough go of things. What else would she be reading but a book titled Holidays in Hell? Who doesn't love a spot of escapist reading at Christmas time? Complicity by Ian Banks, spotted in Hot Fuzz. In Hot Fuzz, Bill Bailey's desk sergeant can be spotted reading Complicity by Ian Banks, a story about a creative serial killer. But, you know, no spoilers. Of course, this isn't the first time Bill has been seen on our screens with a book in hand. His role as long-suffering bookshop assistant Manny in Black Books earned him a soft spot in the hearts of many a bookworm. I got it! <laughs> Ivanhoe by Walter Scott, spotted in The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. In David Fincher's 2008 adaptation of F. Scott Fitzgerald's celebrated 1922 short story about a man whose life is lived in reverse, 
from old age to childhood, Button can be seen devouring Walter Scott's classic Ivanhoe as he hurtles expectantly towards middle age. Fun fact, Ivanhoe is also the name of the Melbourne, Australia suburb where the film's Cate Blanchett grew up. So, that's our list. Are there any we missed? Let us know your favourites in the comments below. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this, subscribe to the Penguin YouTube channel by clicking here. All the books featured in this video are linked in the description below. See you next time.